Hello everyone, it's Natasha from Treasure Books. Most likely you've done this before, so while I will demonstrate how to actually decoupage napkins onto paper, in this video the focus is on giving you lots of ideas on projects that you can make using this simple technique. So we'll start off with a quick demonstration and then we'll move on to all of the fun projects. All right, let's begin. The things that you need for this project is napkins, brush, glue and paper. And as a side note, it doesn't even just have to be paper. It can be anything. It can be wood. It can be your wall. It can be a door. But today, let's just stick with paper. So with the napkins, they don't have to be anything special in particular. You can get napkins on Amazon, eBay, um, op shops, thrift stores, $2 shops, which is where I got a lot of mine from. Just keep your eyes open and you will start seeing them. In terms of the brushes, a nice large brush that can cover a, a large area all at once is the way to go. So you don't want anything tiny like this. It will take a while to cover the whole napkin. And you don't want anything really coarse. I know you can't tell in the video, but these brushes here are quite coarse and they can rip my napkin. So something in between this one is beautiful and soft and, and large. It can cover a large area at once. So that's the sort of thing you're looking for. All right, let's talk glue. So I use PVA glue. People often ask me this question, what is PVA glue? It's just white glue, very inexpensive glue. Elmer's, for example, is white glue. And usually we'll say PVA somewhere on the bottle. You can use wood glue. You can really use any white glue. But the secret is you want the glue to be runny. So what I do, it really depends on how runny your glue is. Some glues are more thick than others. So what I do, I pour two thirds of this glue in my little bottle here in this little jar. So I do two thirds of white glue and then one third of water. And then I mix it all up together. But consistency is what matters. So you want your glue to be runny. See that? Almost like, almost like water, really runny. So then it's really easy to spread that glue around without dragging the napkin over the top. So that's the secret, running glue, just add water. You don't have to measure anything. You just put some glue, you put some water. If it's too runny, you add more glue. If it's not runny enough, you add more water. And then as a side note, that solution doesn't go bad. It can just stay like that forever, right? Because it's water-based, so you're just adding more water. It's no big deal. I talk a little bit more about glues in my frequently asked questions. I will pop that video down below in the description box if you have more questions. All right, next. Let's talk paper. So this is what I have been using. I've been using some book pages, packaging paper, any paper will do, more packaging paper, anything you have on hand. File folders like this, you can do music paper, you can do maps, you can do paper bags, paper shopping bags, you can do book covers, which I will also demonstrate or show in this video. You know, that's how you can alter the book covers, adding some beautiful napkins, cereal boxes, Whatever you have on hand, start playing. All right, now let's get to the technique. So first I'm gonna protect my desk and choose some napkins. So for single pages like this, and by the way, I'm gonna show you oh, the projects that I actually make with these. For single pages like this, I like to use a napkin that has an image like this or like this, rather than something like this where it's just the whole napkin is just this one kind of all overall look, if that makes sense. But you can most definitely use that as well if you wanna cover the whole page. I've already hacked into this one, but the next thing you want to do is remove the backing. You only want to use the very top ply. So some napkins will have three plies, some will have two. You just remove the top and you can use a bit of sticky tape to remove that top, whatever way you can do it. You just need to get rid of that white ply or if there's you know two you get rid of both of them and now i think this image might be a bit too large for my book page that i have over here but that's okay the next thing i'm going to do is rip out the image that i want on my page so i have this watercolor pen that already has water here in the barrel i got this on ebay ages ago but you can just use a brush with water and then you just do this around the image I'm kind of cutting into this image because it's not fitting on my page. And now we can very easily just get those beautiful edges by ripping that away. And here we go. That's one image done. And now I'm going to do exactly the same thing over here. 
And here we go. Now this is ready to be decoupaged. Just want to check if this image is going to fit. Yeah, that's going to be perfect. Okay, and time to decoupage. So I'm going to do this one, this first one without using a glue stick. And then I'll show you how you can use a glue stick to help hold it in place. So I have just popped the napkin over the top. That's all I've done so far. I get some glue and I start somewhere in the middle and out. And pretty much just cover the whole thing. That's all there is to it. And there we go. So this one's done. I personally like the wrinkles that you might get. The glue stick will help pre prevent somewhat those wrinkles if you don't like them. I like them. Uh, the important thing is that you don't have any air bubbles. The whole napkin is completely glued down. The air bubbles uh, might, you know, cause the, the napkin to start kind of peeling off once it's dry. So if you find some air bubbles, you just go over it again push that air bubble out. It comes up pretty easily because it's very, very thin, this napkin. And that's it. You put it aside to dry. Once it's dried, you can put it under something heavy to, you know, because it's going to wrinkle up really badly. You'll see, I'll show you. And you can either iron the whole thing or what I do is I just put it under some heavy books and then it's nice and flat. All right, I'm popping that aside. And here comes the glue stick. So I've seen people only use the glue stick. I don't like to only use the glue stick because I don't think it will hold for very long. So you just basically cover your base, pop your image over the top and smooth it down. You still might get some wrinkles like I already did over here. I'm not being very pedantic in particular. I'm sure that if you're really taking good care, you can get that image on there with no wrinkles. But personally, I kind of like the wrinkles. And then just do the same thing again. Go over it with the brush and the glue solution. And that's it, done. Once this is dried, that napkin is not peeling off. That's not going anywhere. Now you can, like I said, this is the decoupaging the technique and you can apply this to anything you can think of. The only thing is I'm not sure with glass and plastic, I'm not sure if you need a specialized type of glue. I'm not an expert on that. So that might be something if you, you might want to research. But this is how you do it on paper. Very, very simple and not much wrinkling on that one, as you can see. So the main thing is you use runny glue, you use one ply of napkin and you start in the middle out. And that's it. Make sure there's no bubbles and you can very easily see bubbles if you kind of tilt it to the side and that's it. You let it dry. All right, now let's get to the projects. This is what they look like when they're dry and laid under something heavy. All right, so what I've done with those, and here, you know, I've used off cuts, the little bits that I have just to decorate pages, and I can have this in my little scrap box or, you know, make something with it when I'm making a journal. Then I have also directly decoupaged onto pages that can go straight into my journals. They can be bound in. So pages like this, for example, there's something here and there's an image here. And then I have, you know, pages here. And so I have these ready to go into signatures. With these single paged ones, what I've done is I made some journaling spots you can see here. That's that exact same image that I've just used. So basically I have backed it onto some tea dyed paper, avocado dyed actually this one, and then I sewn around. You don't have to, I always say you don't have to sew anything, just use glue. But I like the, the look of that stitching. And here I have a journaling spot that can go into a journal and you can use the back for journaling, writing poetry, writing about your day, that kind of thing. Another thing that I've done over here, I used them as pockets. See, so this is also a page that's ready to go into a journal. So let's just say, for example, this journal is already bound, but let's just say, for example, you will have a page like this in your journal. You have, you know, a pocket there and then on the other side, there will be a pocket here. You can have a tag, you can have more pages for journaling. I think you get the drift. And I always like to have pages that are ready to go into the journals. These are all folded pages. Some have things that I've done in previous tutorials, you know, folded pages that are ready to, I can just come in and grab pages from here and bind them into my journal. So things like this and things like these, they go into my box 
and then they're ready to go. I can come in and grab some blank pieces of paper. I can come in and grab some pages that are already decorated and then I can do a journal, you know, quite quickly put together a journal. And then for these journaling spots, here we go, a journal that I'm currently working on looking for a pocket here we go and that can go inside a pocket like that and it looks beautiful in a journal it can be clipped onto the side of a page and you know off you go okay next thing i've got to show you is this paper it's slightly fragile and it's a packaging paper you know that comes in orders and boxes and stuff like that what i did with these is basically i just grab a napkin cut it in half this way and go mad decoupaging it on and then once it's dry here's one that's completely dry i can use this i think this would be a quite a nice page in a journal and especially because it has beautiful texture and it has that beautiful crinkly size signed sound that we all love and then also it can just be as it is or what i've done here i mean you can make so many things with this pouches little pockets envelopes like i've done here a little envelope i just pretty much folded it and sewn around or you can just fold it how you want it and glue it down here on the sides add a little bit of lace over here and it's just the crinkle is out of this world i love it so that's what i've done with those and you know any any of the stuff that you're keeping i know a lot of us like to keep we get things and then we think oh i can use this for something so decoupaging napkins is so fun because it's so diverse it can go on anything and especially on quite fragile paper as well it will strengthen the paper not that i'm saying this is fragile but that's a bonus because it makes that paper a lot more sturdy next thing i've done is made writing boards these are quite thick boards and they are double-sided i've used the same napkin on both sides i'll show you in a moment what i've done here it's quite thick board and the idea is that this is a writing board it lives inside the journal i don't know which one looks better and then because our junk journals tend to get bulky and we have bits and pieces everywhere i like to keep mine fairly you know kind of flat but we have paper clips and beads and here's a paper clip so for example if i was to write on this page here that paper clip might get in my way so then you just use a writing board underneath and then you have nothing in your way you have a nice flat surface to write write on and you just keep moving it around okay so that's what a writing board is and i'll show you how i made this and this is where a cereal box comes in any type of anything that you have will do any sort of packaging in this particular case i was using a cereal box you might want to paint maybe perhaps this would look better on a white surface maybe a little bit of white paint i didn't want to bother you know some boxes have a white inside so that might be a better option it really depends on what kind of an image you want to use so to make the writing boards i've cut off all of these bits that i don't need i'm not being extremely particular it doesn't have to be i find the middle and just cut there it doesn't have to be perfect because we will be cutting off those sides later next you get your napkin and i'm gonna cut it in half and it's much easier to cut your napkin before removing that extra plies extra sheets that we don't need another point to make here is that not every napkin will do for this project so for example i can't really use this napkin because this image is one is going this i could no one says i can't but you know the image is going one's going this way one's looking up that way so this is perhaps something i would uh, leave for a different type of project but for the writing boards i want a non-directional kind of you can go you know either way right so these are my napkins they're a bit larger than my cereal box so i might just get rid of some of that excess up the top remove that extra piece that i don't need and then i go ahead and decoupage so for this maybe using a little bit of glue stick might i don't know help the process but basically i just pop the napkin on top and start in the middle and decoupage out which i won't do now because i want to show you how i actually put them together so let's just pretend this is decoupaged on and it's dry and then i have my two boards that i this is the 
pretty side with my napkin over here. I'm going to turn them around and then I use some double sided tape. And I'm not worried about this double sided tape seeping through. You know, if you've seen my video where I showed you what happens after a few years with double sided tape. When I'm using cardstock like this, and especially when it's covered with this beautiful napkin that you pretend you can see over here, it would have to seep through uh, quite a thick layer of stuff. So with this type of project, I don't worry about using double sided tape. All right, so now we're removing this. And now I'm going to glue this on top of this. So we're keeping, obviously, the beautiful napkin sides. You know, we don't want to see that cereal box. So just like that, you can see uneven edges. You can see still things poking out. You can see when the, you know, the napkin is glued on, you can see bits sticking up here. So this is when we want to get pedantic with the edges. And I just want to make sure I cut off any of the stuff that's visible and then we have this board that's nice and straight on all sides it's quite thick beautiful writing board that has that beautiful image on there of course and now what i did at this step is i went around and sewed all around all around so if you don't want to use a sewing machine or if you don't have one whatever when you're gluing at this step, when you're gluing stuff down, make sure you glue completely to the edges. Or you can go around and cover it with some washi tape. Or you can even cut it into tags. It doesn't have to be a writing board. You can have tags like this. You cut them out, you put them through perhaps an embossing machine. You can have embossed beautiful tags with, you know, beautiful napkins. I mean, so many things you can do with this. All right, next thing I'm going to show you is this. I covered the whole book cover using a napkin. So it's not done yet. I haven't done the inside yet. I'm not going to cover this with napkin, but you could. You could go ahead and cover the inside with napkin as well. This one is a little bit more of a tedious process, which I'm going to talk you through. Look at this. I love it. And I want to add some gold accents and maybe some gold corners up there. Just play around. You don't have to cover the whole thing. You can just do something with just the front cover, right? Because it's less of a project. It's much quicker to do. With this one, I also want to add gold accents everywhere. I want to make it look more sort of altered, more vintage looking, maybe some book corners. So this one's definitely not done yet. And you can see when you cover, you can see how this writing is, you know, it's still visible, which is I'm fine with, but it's not as visible as this. There's ways. I will definitely cover this with something, perhaps some lace or I don't know what I'm going to do with it. If, my point is it's not done. But as you can see, I have decoupaged that beautiful napkin, this one here, kind of ripped the edges. And I also, because it's a black cover and images can kind of get lost in the black cover, they're not very bright images like see here. You can't really see very clearly that image. What I did is I just add a little bit of gesso or white paint underneath and then I decoupaged on top of the white paint so that the image kind of comes through a little bit better. That's if you have a black cover. If you have a white cover, even better. So this one here is done exactly the same way that I did those book pages. The only difference is I'm not using a book page, I'm using a book cover. This one here was a bit more tedious. It was a bit more tedious process. And basically all I did, I mean, it just takes a little bit more care. So all I did, first I protect my desk with a cereal bag or paper or whatever. Maybe a cereal bag is better because things don't glue onto the cereal bag. I grab my napkin and of course remove the extra ply and put it over the top of my cover just like this and I decoupage exactly the same way that I did those book pages at the beginning I start here in the middle then I do the grooves add glue and then I go out out all the way out to the edges and once you're doing it it's very easy to do because that napkin kind of just glues down straight away. This is why it's important to have runny glue so it can just soak right through the napkin and don't be stingy with that glue either. Just keep adding glue and this is the effect. So I went all all the way to the edges and I let it dry and then once that was dried I turned it around and I popped those napkin edges in and I did exactly the same thing with the glue. Just glued it completely down. And you can see that's really flush down, very well glued down. I have also gone over this with a gloss varnish 
because I wanted a gloss it was very matte looking and I wanted a gloss look so I just use a little bit of varnish and that's the cover for a journal done well the outside anyway and I'm really quite happy with how this looks and you can see here if I had used a white book cover you can see how much more of that image would be visible so that I think a, probably a lighter cover would look better I guess you can see how much brighter that looks I mean this looks quite fine as well and especially if I'm gonna decorate the you know the front a little bit more but there's definitely a huge difference so if you don't have any white covers perhaps use some white paint or gesso this is going to look perfect once it's done use what you have and by the way perhaps you don't have books like I do I actually have a lot of books uh, that were discarded by a library they were being sent to be destroyed so that's why I have all of these covers and I've used the pages inside and I keep using pages inside so anyway I mean I wouldn't say go destroying the books on your bookshelf but if you happen to have some old diaries laying around then you can still use the covers 2019 planner that you had you can alter the front and you can use this technique so use what you have next one i'm going to show you is paper bags and this one i consider a little bit of a fail because this is what happened and the reason why this happened is because i actually ironed it before i ironed it it was wrinkly yes but it wasn't this bad so what i was planning to do with this i want to have a little image at the front and then perhaps i could do something like this should have had the image down lower and you know the plan was to make it look really pretty decorate this little bag somehow you know like this the image really should be lower or you know i don't know just play around that was kind of like i was going for this kind of thing but what happened is i thought it would look even better if i iron it completely flat and this is what happened and in my eyes this it looks really ugly it's ruined but i don't think that it can't be done maybe i should have put it under something heavy rather than ironing so i don't know what went wrong but i think we most definitely can decoupage on paper bags it's just that this particular one didn't work and then i didn't try it again this one for me is a fail so one thing i realized is light surfaces definitely work better this is not white if it's coming across white it's just a file folder pale yellow color and all i did was i have one here that i didn't cut up I just glue my napkin down so I did all sorts of different napkins I I think with this one I can do a few different things so I'll just pop it aside for now exact same thing you know I decoupage some napkins cut that down and decoupage away and these are the things that I've made so first off I've made tags just like this some of them sewing around some I haven't this is all file folder folder tags and you can see maybe let's see I'm trying to see if I can peel off that napkin I can't it's not peeling off but just in case I like to do the sewing not on all of them but that's my thinking like what if the napkin starts peeling off I always worry about that stuff it's not peeling off I actually did a project where I kind of didn't like it and I wanted to peel the napkin off and I couldn't so anyway the, this is another one same napkin two slightly different things then over here I did some tags this one's just sewing around this one I added a tab up the top here's that beautiful bird image we can do so many you can do a whole journal with just different types of things using the same image depending on how many you have and then I also made covers these are going to be little journal covers uh, maybe I should call them like an extra little booklet that I would pop into a journal maybe not a standalone journal but you can see that napkin I just cut a napkin in half you can see this one here a coffee themed this one I've done sewing around and all that is is just a napkin that's been cut in half and glued down you can still see I got some little wrinkles in there but the image is intact it's not too bad and especially if you have images with faces like these here these bored angels they look quite bored well this one ha does have wrinkles but it's not really going too much across the face sometimes too many wrinkles can distort the image or the face so with this one yes I've used the glue stick first and then the decoupaging with the glue and they don't even have to be images they can just be whatever it is that you have on hand i think they all look pretty 
So uh, now that I have this one here that's already dried, I want to show you how I cut it so that it's perfect. You can see you want it all aligning nicely and all, all nice and straight. But when you're doing decoupage, you might stretch some parts of the napkin a bit more than others. You can see it's quite uneven. So the way that I deal with that is basically it's very, very simple. I just fold this in half. You need to have at least one straight edge that you can work with. I'm going to use that straight edge, make sure that I've aligned everything. Well, I probably first should have looked at where the napkin has its little spine. And this particular image, of course, that I'm demonstrating with does have that line there. And now I didn't fold it in the right place, but we will find a way to deal with that. Uh, most napkins don't have that kind of thing, so it doesn't really matter where you fold. But I could, if I really was pedantic and I really hated what I've done, which I don't, but if I did, I would now proceed to make this into a little spine. And that's, that's all that I would do. But anyway, I'm just going to keep going with this. So basically now we know that we have a straight edge here and we have a straight edge here. I'm going to take my cutter and just trim off all of those uneven bits. I actually was planning to make tags out of this. I wasn't even planning to make a little cover thing. But anyway, I thought I'll demonstrate what I how I kind of did it. There we go. And then I'm going to do the sides. And here we go. So I can go ahead, ink the edges, maybe add some sewing. I think those inked edges give it a nice finished look. Maybe I can do this a little bit. I always do like to add a bit of sewing. I have green thread in my machine now, so I'm not going to add that onto this. And I'm just going to leave it as it is. It looks really cool. Uh, you can do both sides, I guess. Make it even sturdier. Here is just decoupaging that I did on a white cereal box again, uh, but the white inside, and then I can do something with this. And another thing that I've done actually previously when I was using cereal bags and making these things, you can see I decoupaged that seahorse onto a book page on both sides, and then I created, this is another video actually, I created these pockets using a cereal box liner. So there's just so much fun stuff that we can do with ne uh, decoupaging napkins. You can just go ahead and decoupage it. And I mean, the possibilities, they just never end. This one here was the only fail, but in terms of all of the other things, I'm quite satisfied with how they turned out. And it's really fun using all of these different napkins and making all these different things. I have these mini journal covers. I have these writing spots. I have the journal covers, I have journaling spots, single pieces of paper, decoupage, I have folded pages that are ready to go into a journal, and then this pocket page that's also ready to go into a journal, papers like this, that can go as pages in a journal, envelopes, I can just keep going with this, it's quite easy to do and quite a lot of fun. So this is what the pages look like when they're dried and, you know, they're very warped and laying them under something heavy helps. You can see they get quite flat just overnight. See, quite flat. And you can also iron them as well. I protect it with baking paper before I iron them. If I might, some of them I've ironed, some I haven't. I know 100% this one here was not ironed. It was just laying under something heavy. And this one was ironed. So you can see not much difference. I think my favorite things might be these journaling spots here. I love the tags. Also the writing boards. Perhaps this one would have looked better on a white cereal box but that's okay i still think you know it looks quite nice but i know how i can improve next time i really like these ones as well i can make a little like a journal stack i can make three booklets that come in a pack and i do like how these look i do like how they feel Perhaps I like this one a little bit better than this one here. So I hope you got some new ideas. I hope you feel inspired. Uh, let me know if you've done this before. I'm sure you probably have. Let me know what kind of projects you have done before. And that way I get some new ideas and people reading the comments get some more ideas and it works pretty much for everyone. I think this is one of those things that we can just keep going with. We can just start decoupaging like mad. We can even decoupage doilies. My mother-in-law has beautiful images decoupaged on her wardrobe doors. It just looks absolutely beautiful. 
tables, chairs, all sorts of stuff. My mom has decoupaged plates and made like little plate sets and just looks so beautiful. But I think I have to say I really love when I decoupage on book pages and then that writing comes through. I think it looks really, really beautiful. So let me know what's your favorite one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!